Outlaw Sports is brought to you by Molson Canadian, made from Canada, and Rocky Mountain Barbecue, Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. Hi everybody, welcome to the show. Mike Lonsborough and Grant Pollock, and wouldn't this be a great way for Jerome McGinley to retire or ride off into the sunset in Calgary with the big win in, uh, Saint, against St. Louis, winning their seventh straight at home, scoring the game winner, having an ovation as he go, uh, goes off the ice. Wouldn't that be perfect if they could make this trade happen? And that's the scenario he says goodbye to everybody. I think it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. It, is, it, it is a nice way because if they had traded him after the disasters on the two last road trips, that would be bad. But yeah, to come back and beat St. Louis, score the game winning goal after having so many chances, that would be nice. And I am just so pleased that now that I know Flames ownership, including Murray Edwards, watches us. Because finally, <laughs> after all these years of me getting on this soapbox when we first started He's doing this, yeah. they're finally saying, you know what? Grant and the boys had it right. <laughs> you know, now there's a list. Now there's a couple of things that have happened over the weekend. Brendan Morrow being dealt to the Pittsburgh Penguins sets the bar pretty high for uh, what the Flames can expect. I thought at times, you know, when they were talking, the asking price might be a little too high. Mm -hmm. But, you know, realistically, uh, Pittsburgh had to come up to beat Boston out for Brendan Morrow, which means now Jay Feaster has to be smiling and thinking, okay, if that's what you got for Morrow, here's what I want for Jerome McGinley, who can score more goals and I think still has a bigger step in his game than Brendan Morrow has. The word is it's um, two prospects and a draft pick. Right. So what did they get for Brendan Morrow? They got a prospect and a draft pick? Uh, yeah, I, think the, they, I thought they got two draft picks. Uh, so I think for, for Jerome, it is going to be higher. To me, that's pretty good deal if you yeah. can get two good prospects and and, and a, a you know a, a draft pick I think that would be outstanding depends on that prospect if you got the team's top prospect maybe not two yes. so um, it's interesting that Joe Newendike made that deal as a GM for um, Brendan Morrow going to Pittsburgh and Joe Newendike is the guy the Flames traded to get Jerome McGinley so it's interesting, Grant, because it shouldn't, certainly if you're a veteran on Dallas's team and you see that trade and you go, holy cow, I guess we're not making a run for the playoffs. Uh, but you are building for the future. But then you've got other guys there that like Yager and you wonder, well, we brought, they brought me in here to make a run for the yeah. playoffs, so what's going on here? But so, this is a trouble, Mike, when teams don't re-sign guys or yeah. guys with uh, no trade clauses push the teams to the limit, to the wall. And that's what's happened in Dallas. I mean, they could have tried to re-sign Brendan Moore if they really wanted to. So it is hard on the guys behind, but that's what happens. Same with the Flames. They could have re-signed Jerome. Jerome could have re-signed, but it comes to this point because he's, he could walk away like Brendan Moore could too. So yep. it's a bad situation for the teams. Apparently there's a list out there now, Grant. Uh, there was a list with four teams on it, and you heard Pittsburgh, Boston, uh, Chicago, and LA. and L.A. And maybe Detroit. Maybe Detroit. And there are some rumors that Vancouver uh, might I be can't. on that. But there, that, that's, that is. But you're right. Those are the top ones. Boston, Chicago, uh, L.A., maybe Detroit. I would assume Pittsburgh's off the list. Yeah, you would think. After Not Jerome's that. list, but on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what, what's your heart telling you, Grant? I mean, and, and folks, it may not happen. I mean, the whole thing here is the Flames may field all these offers and say, you know what, we're not getting enough value. Maybe they'll just re-sign the guy. That could happen, Grant. That could happen. Could happen. Could happen. I I'm hope just it doesn't happen. I'm not saying right or wrong. I would think, Mike, if it's come to this point now, it's not going to happen. Yeah. A, a re-signing. Yeah. I think it... It's come to the point now that everybody realizes. Let's just get it over with. And I think this has been the game plan. Um, I've, we've been hard on the Flames ownership, but I think going into this season, Jerome and the Flames said, okay, let's see how we're going to do under Bob Hartley and these new players. Are we going to be a playoff contender or not? Then let's make a decision and you make a decision. Don't, don't you think that's what's happened? And, and so we're come to this point that they thought was plan B. And plan A, of course, was making the playoffs. Sure. Wanted to ask you a couple things. Uh, first of all, do they wait right till the deadline, or do they make the big move like, like Dallas did with Pittsburgh, or like Boston did with Atlanta when they uh, traded to get Peverly and make all those things, bringing Kelly over and all those those kind of players? 
way before and Caberly way before the trading deadline, but at least they had all their pieces in in play when they went to it. Or do you just kind of wait and see? I think you get the best deal. You just make it now. Well, you've got if if it's true, those are the teams that are battling for Jerome McGinley. And, and, and you get, and that's what you want. If you're yeah. Jay Feast and the Flames, you want teams bartering against each other, upping yeah. the bid. But it seems like all these big moves prior to the trade deadline happen a week or two before. Sure. So I would say for, the, for Jay Feast and the Flames, let's get it done this week. Let's not wait to the deadline next week. That would be better for the Flames and for everybody. And I know you don't want to talk about this, but we have to. We have to talk about how big of a deal this trade is how emotionally big this is, not only for the fans of Calgary, and, and I know where you're going with this, but to the ownership. This guy is their beloved centerpiece grant. This is the franchise. This is the face of the franchise. And really, they love this guy. And to part company, you know, I always said there's three guys you should never have traded wearing flame colors. Lanny McDonald, Theron Fleury, and Jerome McGinley. And they traded one of those. Yes, they did. They traded Theron Fleury. So the question is, this is, a, this is a big deal. Of course it's a big deal. It's a yep. huge, it's a huge deal. Though I still think it should have been made for hockey reasons a couple of years sure. ago. But still, Jerome McGinley has been the face of this team, no doubt about it, in the last 10 years. The guys you mentioned, Lanny was for the first 10 years, Theron Fleury was for the next, and Jerome McGinley has been for the last, what, 15 years maybe. Yeah. Um, so it is a huge deal. Um, one thing too, he has never caused this organization any problems. He has been the perfect face for this team. He has made this team a lot of money. So beyond just a feel-good story or the sadness of losing a quality guy and your captain, it's also you're losing your money maker. That probably hurts owners as much as anything right now. <laughs>